Today, we're painting this. But what's the story and how's that gonna help you? Let's get in the truck, go downtown and find out. Wait, are you coming too? I started looking for this one thing when I was out painting complex scenes and it changed everything. In this video, I'm going to show you what it was and how to use it. And all you need are a couple of lines on the canvas, but we'll get to that in a second. If you're having a hard time painting complex scenes outside, take a leap of faith with me. The worst thing that can happen is you're gonna learn something about your process. The first thing you wanna do is lay down some really rough guiding lines. Right away over top of that, you wanna lay down some thin washes. Once the washes are down, I take a rag to the canvas. Why would I do that? Like those initial lines, these washes are meant to be painted over. Here for the next few seconds, you're going to see me going back and forth between drawing and massing in the large shadow shapes. Then you're going to see what it is I'm looking for when I'm out painting in a complex scene, such as a streetscape. There it is, those two lines. That's called a framing device. Everything inside the framing device is what I'm looking at. Everything outside the framing device is pointing you towards what you're looking at. You will see this used a lot in film and in cartoons. It allows the storyteller to remove a lot of visual noise and unneeded details so they can point you directly at the subject of a scene. But how do you use it in a painting? That's what I'm gonna show you. But first, we have to get back to the center of interest. Starting at the center of interest and working out gives you the opportunity to create form on top of your initial shapes. This allows you to figure out the planes of objects. Why would you wanna do that? It gives you a quick win on creating the illusion of depth in a painting. Now this can be rough, it doesn't have to be perfect. We will add layers on top as we go. From your center of interest out, you're going to work in the shadows. You're going to add variety to those shapes and create smaller secondary shapes. At the same time, you are also going to be drawing and massing like you were in the initial stage. Can you see what I'm doing here? I'm looking for changes in the color, not the values. In the area surrounding the center of interest, you're going to want to start looking for objects within the shadow masses. This right here could have been a big problem. I finally noticed there was someone in the car. Had I known she was in there, I probably would have painted something else. She could have driven off at any time. This is why street scenes are complex. They have a lot of moving parts and they can change in a moment. Something to consider when painting vehicles. Do I think this car is gonna be here a while? Thankfully for us, it was. Back to the painting. Here we're gonna start playing with the framing device. You're going to wanna look for opportunities to show overlap in this shape, but you're going to wanna work briefly here. This isn't where you want people to look. Keep those values tight. Next, we're going to work the lights into the area of interest. Here, we're looking at the ground plane. Sometimes it's easier to look at the local temperature when the values are almost identical. It's much easier than trying to figure out the precise color. Once I have the lightest lights around that area of interest, I like to start working into the darker light shapes. You should still be working in general. You don't need to be very specific yet with these larger shapes. You're trying to get them to look good together. After getting further out and creating a more general shape, I will usually head back into that center of interest and make a few precise marks. Then I will continue to repeat that process as I'm working. That framing device is a perfect place to put a leading line. Do you have any idea why I'm putting in these cool bluish marks? Those are the top planes of objects that have a reflective quality. The tops of cars are highly reflective. Sidewalks at a good distance typically will reflect the blue of the sky. 
Those few light marks indicate light raking the top of the trees, the tree trunks, and the limbs be specific. Making marks any lighter than that up there would draw a lot of attention because of the contrast with those dark shapes. Once the painting looks like something, I like to take a break. You can only make so many decisions before your brain needs a respite from paying attention to a multitude of things. Justin enjoying a Megan Fox. That was the name of the sandwich. <laughs> I have no idea. Back to work, into that framing device. Why would I put such faint indication of plane changes there? Because I want your attention on the light up by the car. Contrast is comparative. The more attention you have down in the framing device, the less attention you'll pay up to the subject. If you have watched this far, please give a like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments if this helped, or what you would like to see covered in future videos. Here, I'm indicating light hitting the telephone pole. This slightly breaks up that edge on the framing device. You want to obscure it a little bit, but you don't want to completely wipe it out. This is a matter of personal taste. As you're watching movies in the future, continue to look and see how things are kind of set up within the screen. How would you lead someone through a shadow shape? Here, I use dab of light as stepping stones to get to the back. You can get a print of the painting below. Now, back to the video. The further back you go into space, the less detail you need to give the illusion of objects. Try this. Extend your arm and make a fist. You should be able to make out your hand fairly well. Without taking your eyes off of your hand, how much detail can you see around it? I'd imagine not much. That's what I'm going for. I'm trying to create the illusion of vision. So, when I'm looking at the center of interest, the further back in the distance I go, I like to show less contrast. To paint complex subjects outside, you have to be able to paint not only what you see, but what you know. In the distance, try and condense the value range, even if you don't see it. It will help convey depth. Here, I'm going to indicate forms in the foreground. And here in the foreground, I'm going to put a gradient on the ground plane. Do you have any idea why I would do that? Gradients can help you put large flat shapes into perspective. Plainly said, it tilts it. The blue mark on the ground plane at the edge of the framing device is to make the light hitting the ground warmer by comparison. This will help make a cool color in the light appear warmer than it would otherwise. Here I put a little shadow in the distant building. It helps frame a gable of the roof. And now it's time to clean up some of the shapes. So next time you're out there and you get a little caught up in how complicated things are, remember this. You can always make it easier by using a framing device. Figure out what it is that you want the viewer to look at and then use that framing device to point at it. If you are having trouble figuring out what you want viewers to look at, this next video will help you on the hunt to figure it out. Until next time, take care.